House prices are predicted to increase in 2024. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and hopefully it's chilled today. And let's check out this article, another one from Mortgage Business, about house prices in 2024. Well, CBA unveils a new value forecast for 2023. I know I said 2024, we'll get to that. So the major bank has told its shareholders that home values are expected to continue lifting into next year. In a recent shareholder meeting held on Wednesday, the 11th of October, the Commonwealth Bank conveyed its prediction of a 9% upturn in home values for the upcoming year. The bank also anticipates 2024 will bring a further 5% lift in home values. I mean, there you go, guys. I've mentioned many times the pillars of the housing market. Now, this isn't me spruiking property, okay? This is me frustrated with, well, all the predictions of economic and housing corrections that have repeatedly failed again and again and again and trying to understand why they have. It's a complex, multivariant uh, situation. And, well, if you're waiting for a correction, guys, I, I, I think you're kind of screwed. If, if that's the only way you can get in, you've got to find another way. Perhaps it's moving somewhere cheaper or building up another income stream. I, yeah. I mean, it's YouTube, guys. Become a professional YouTuber, eh? Even that's, uh, I think that's going to change. You'll see that next month. Wait, wait to see all the YouTubers bitching and moaning because they're making some changes behind the ad algorithm. So wait and see. Chief Executive uh, Matt uh, Common highlighted the lingering impact of previous interest rate hikes by the RBA on the housing sector. He acknowledged the financial pressures faced by many Australians in the current environment with the rising cost of livings affecting numerous customers. While most remain well positioned, we recognize that some customers are finding the current environment very tough, he said. We are contacting every customer coming off a fixed rate mortgage to discuss options, as well as provide flexibility and financial assistance to those who need it. The bank's digital capabilities play a pivotal role in enhancing customer visibility and financial insight, he observed. Despite recognizing the financial challenges faced by numerous Australians due to higher mortgage rates, He reflected on the bank's $10 billion profit for the 2023 fiscal year, attributing it to CBA status as Australia's largest bank. So here's the thing. As an Australian, do you own shares in CBA? I'm sure most of you would in your super fund, even if you don't realize it. Okay, so this is the thing when, particularly when you see on on bloody all the people bitching and moaning about these organizations making profit. If you want a share of the profit... You can. It's not like the past. You can easily just go out and buy a part of the company that you can own so you can get a share of those dividends. And these are options we have nowadays that previous generations would never have had. So take advantage of it. Hashtag not financial advice. I mean, come on. It's the idiots who take financial advice from YouTubers or TikTokers. It's ludicrous. Ultimately, the size of the profit is a function of being Australia's largest bank. The bank serves 17 million customers and manages approximately 900 billion in savings and nearly 1 trillion in loans. Oh, he's, he's having to justify it because of all of the, the bitching and moaning. You want profitable businesses. That's a good thing, okay? We want profitable businesses. This year, we lent $35 billion to small businesses to help them grow, helped 150,000 people buy new homes, and helped depositors earn nearly $11 billion in additional interest income. Over 12 million Australians are CBA shareholders, either directly or through their super funds, and the bank has returned $10 billion to shareholders through dividends and buybacks, he said. There you go. Okay? How many times does the government get a profit? How much of it do we get back? Do they reduce the loans? No. They just keep taxing us more. Our customer focus, coupled with consistent, disciplined execution, has delivered volume growth in all core lines of business. On the back of higher interest rates and increasing home values, The ComBank HSI index reported that home buying had experienced a minor setback in September, declining by 0.4%, making an annual drop exceeding 10%. Nevertheless, with interest rates currently at their peak or near it, home buying activity in the forthcoming months should enjoy support from strong demand. 
albeit with a limitation due to low supply of available property. The index analysis revealed that household spending fell in five of the 12 underlying categories, encompassing recreation, utilities, health, household goods, and household services. As I said, people are going to make lifestyle changes to make sure they hold onto their house. They're going to do whatever is necessary. This resulted in an annual spending growth reduction from a peak of 18.7% in August 22 to 1.8%. Notably, spending on household services experienced a 0.8% decrease in September, marked by declines in trading platforms, fund managers, and real estate agents. Looking forward, the major bank anticipates a reduction in pressure on households as inflation continues to stabilize. The economy remains fundamentally sound, and we maintain a positive outlook, he said. Meanwhile, Genevieve Bell, AO, has announced her retirement from the board effective the 31st of October 23, as she prepares to assume her new role as Vice-Chancellor of ANU. Chairman Paul O'Malley expressed his gratitude to Ms. Bell for her significant contributions during her tenure since 2019, highlighting the immense value of her skills and experience on the board. What a time to be on the board over these last few years. Damn. The board extended its congratulations to Miss Bell on her appointment as Vice-Chancellor. Yeah, that's uh, definitely, I'd argue, a step up. What do you reckon? So let's have a bit of a chat about this one, guys. There we go. It's all, all working eventually. I mean, there's nothing new here, nothing I suspect anyone is surprised with. A little sad that the bank has to really defend being a profitable organization so hard, but that's probably just the climate we're living in. You've got so many people that don't understand reality and are blaming others for their own just lack of lack of achievement. They, they, it's, it's the tall poppy syndrome. That's what it is. I think the tall poppy syndrome is very bloody hard here in Australia. It's ingrained in our culture more than anything, and you've got now a young generation that's just primed to take advantage of it. My concern is where this will steer political voting. We've seen just recently, look at what some of our leftist nutcase politicians are saying publicly. Utterly insane. Oh, there you go, guys. Anyway, I can't imagine any of you all surprised at this prediction. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Check out Heiser Bim or Heiser Does if you want to see other content. And if you want to support us, you can on YouTube or Patreon. Use our referral links via Pocket Squares or call me if you need an architect. Take care, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.